Lee Cowan has the story of an Afghan refugee closer to home, with an entire town looking out for him. At first glance, Iowa Falls, Iowa might be an odd place for a devout Muslim. Pork, for example, forbidden in Islam, is pretty big business here. And there isn't a mosque for miles. Okay, where's the horn on this? Oh, that works. And yet, for Zalmay Niazi, an Afghan who goes simply by Z, Iowa Falls has been the answer to his prayers. Do you feel that Iowa Falls is your home? Iowa Falls is home. He came to the U.S. after serving as an interpreter for both U.S. and Allied forces in eastern Afghanistan. Every mission made him a target of the Taliban. I have seen a lot of my very good friends have been killed, and we've been given body bags to just pick something for the family. Did your Humvee ever get hit? Uh, plenty times. He had a bullet taken out of his arm, he nearly lost an eye to shrapnel, and when the bus he was riding in drove over a roadside bomb, he nearly lost a leg. When folks in Iowa Falls heard of his service, it's not just his personality, it's his character. People like Dwayne and Emily Krukenberg didn't just welcome him, <laughs> they practically saluted him. He would do anything for anybody and he showed that with the service he did for us. He's probably more of an American than some people that are born here. What few people knew, however, was just how Z got here in the first place. In 2014, the U.S. contractors he had been working for in Kabul flew him to Washington, D.C. For business. Z was thrilled, but he had no intention of leaving Afghanistan for good. If everybody leaves that country, he was going to fix it. Hours after he landed, his parents found a warning, one of several they'd received from the Taliban, nailed to their front door. In short, it said if Z went home, he'd be dead and so would his family. The Taliban had already made good on past threats. He says they murdered his uncle and forced his parents into hiding. It was the hardest decision of my life that what am I going to do? I just didn't want it at any more pain. Just didn't want my family to live like immigrants in their own country anymore. Z had no choice but to apply for political asylum. Oh, you don't keep your car clean, Papa. He had nothing but the clothes on his back when he arrived in Iowa Falls. One of the first to help him... So you got quite a bit of work? Yeah. ...was a giant of a man, yeah, that's both in stature and in spirit. This, I, will do it. I don't let him speak his foreign language around me, because then I think he's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Ingebrigtsen so you, uh, never served in the armed forces. At six foot ten, yeah, we, he was too tall. But offering kindness, he says doesn't have a height restriction. Why did you do that? Why did you give him a chance? Oh, you get a kid that's, let's say, 10,000 miles away from home, three-time wounded veteran, and he says, can you help me? You don't turn him down. You do the right thing. I told him that I'm buying this house. He looked at me, said, are you stupid? <laughs> Mike loaned Z money to buy an old house that was practically falling down, and helped him turn it into a home. Z's pretty handy that way, so much so he started his own business, Z Handyman Services. He quickly got a reputation as the contractor the town could count on. Just ask those working at the local optometry shop, where Z was installing a new ceiling. How important is he to the community as a whole, you think? Oh my God, everybody here knows him. Everybody knows that he would do everything he could for anybody here. Always willing to help. Um, plus, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> yes. Everyone in town pretty much assumed that Z would be granted asylum. But when his interview with U.S. immigration officials finally came around, something didn't seem quite right. Uh, my interview was almost seven hours. Seven hours. Z had to account for everything including his childhood, and one day in particular, when Z says he was forced to give the Taliban a piece of bread at gunpoint. Or, they warned, 
you will kill your parents or we will burn your house. And as a nine years old kid, not even nine, man, I was scared. I didn't knew what else to do to protect my family. That's what they wanted. This is that letter that I got from the government. Three months ago, Z got a letter from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services that suggested that that morsel of bread he gave the Taliban all those years ago could be viewed as aiding an enemy, an allegation which could get him deported. You have engaged in terrorist activity. Did you feel betrayed? I did. I got stabbed in the back. As Afghanistan fell to the Taliban, over the past few weeks, the question on everyone's mind was if the U.S. is risking life and limb to evacuate people fearing for their lives, why on earth would they send someone like Z back? We're supposed to be reasonable people, and to me, we're better than this. I won't let it happen. The residents of Iowa Falls quickly went into action, including Mike's wife, Linda. I mean, everybody in Iowa Falls <laughs> would go to jail for him, I think. In a matter of weeks, the town raised more than $40,000 to hire Z the best immigration lawyers they could find. But as the scenes outside Kabul airport became more and more desperate, Z was getting more and more anxious, not only for himself, but for his family. But then a bit of potential good news. U.S. immigration officials won't comment on why or what, if anything's really changed pertaining to Z's case. But Z's attorney was notified two weeks ago that the U.S. has now agreed to re-examine his application for asylum. <laughs> In Iowa Falls, it doesn't really matter the why. All that matters is that Z just might have a chance to stay where they think he belongs. I want to propose a toast to our friend Z, that he forever stays in Iowa Falls. You're there. I promise I will. <laughs> For Z, it's bittersweet. His family is still stuck back in Afghanistan, the country he nearly died to rebuild. And he vows the fight isn't over yet. It takes a lot to make a community make make a country great, and I did it, I will do it again, and I, I will stand for what's right.